Silver Hawaii! A fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver! The Lone Ranger! the early western United States, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. At a time and place when only brave men could survive, no one could match his courage and daring. But justice meant more to him than the letter of the law. If a man deserved a second chance, the Lone Ranger was always ready to help him. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Tell Silver, we're heading for Wichita County. Tell them waiting on the trail ahead. Hey, oh, Silver, away. Dan Riley, the sheriff of Wichita County, was seated on a bench facing the main street of Fairfield. He was talking with several of his friends and a tall stranger. The topic under discussion was an outlaw about whom nothing had been heard during the past year. A smiling kid. He sure was running wild for a spell there. And now nobody's got any notion what become of him. You figure the law never did catch up to him, eh, Sheriff? I'd have heard of it if he'd ever been jailed. It's possible that the fellow reformed. Think so, stranger? Well, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Crooks ain't much on turning over a new leaf and going straight. My guess it'd be that things got so hot for him, he made tracks for territory where he wasn't knowed. It's likely. But that ain't what I started out to say. I ain't never said much about it afore, but it always struck me funny that none of you fellas ever had a notion who the smiling kid was. Eh? No, why should we? He never operated around here. <laughs> you sound as though you know his identity, Sheriff. I got IDs. You mean you met up with him? If my ideas are right, I did. And for the matter of that, so the rest of you. You're loco. Maybe if I told you a little yarn about what happened almost two years ago, you'd see what I mean. We'd like to hear it, Sheriff. Yeah, go ahead. Hi there, Sheriff. Hello there, Steve. See you later. All right. Get up, Get up. Now, where Get was up. I? Oh, oh yes, the story. Well, do you fellas know the school teacher, May Williams? Uh, the stranger don't, of course, but you hombres do. There's a doggone fine girl. No folks, no kin or nothing, and she can make her living just as well as a man can. And ask her no favors, neither. Uh-huh. Then maybe you recollect she used to keep company with young Bob Jessup, Martin and Matilda's boy. Sure. Say, whatever's become of Bob, I ain't just seen him... Just hold on, will you? You'll see soon enough. Well, like I was saying, this was nigh on to two years ago. It was evening, and I was sitting here in my office when I heard a rap on the door. Come in. Good evening, Sheriff. Come on in, mate. Howdy, Bob. Hello there, me. Good evening, Sheriff. See, what's ailing you, Bob? Ailing me? First time I ever seen you without a grin on your face. Didn't hardly recognize you right off. Gosh, you're only not grinning. 
You look as though you just lost your best friend. What's the matter? There's something I want to ask you, Sheriff. Mm, ask ahead. It's about a point of law. Mm, well, I ain't no lawyer, but I might be able to help you. Oh. <laughs> ain't wondering when it's legal to get hitched, are you? This is serious, Sheriff. Uh-huh. Look here, Sheriff. You heard about that Eastern Mining Company that was after Pa's claim? Heard some talk. What about them? Pa signed a paper giving all his property over to him. Does he have to go through with it? Shucks, son, if he's sold, it's sold, ain't it? But they swindled him. Pa can't read, write, nor cipher. He didn't know what he was signing. Imagine people taking advantage of Bob's father like that. Mm, now, what did he figure he was signing? When he took that cash and put his mark on that paper, he thought he was just selling a couple feet of the vein, not all of it. It's just plain stealing, that's what it is. When you get as old as I am, son, you'll learn there's just as much stealing goes on inside the law as out. Well, I ain't gonna stand for it. Ain't much you can do. Pa's worked hard all his life. That measly bit of cash that Mason has paid him and Ma won't last for no time. They won't have nothing to keep him. Well, I'm gonna do something about it. Good paying jobs are sort of scarce just now. That ain't what I'm talking of. No? If those fellas can steal, so Pa and Ma be left to starve, then I got just as much right to steal to keep them from starving. Bob, oh, oh no. And if I turn crooked, I won't hide belong to, behind the law neither, like them skunks. I'll do my stealing out in the open. No, Bob. Don't talk like that, Bob. It, it's sinful. Sinful. And what happened next after that, Sheriff? That must have been just before Bob left town. It was. And he hadn't been gone a week before stories started drifting back about the smiling kid and his holdups. You think Bob Jessup and the smiling kid are one and the same? You ain't never seen him, stranger. But if you had, and if you'd looked over the wanted notice I got inside the office there, you'd notice Bob and the fellow that's described are one and the same. I never thought of Bob when I read it, Sheriff. Nope, but you never heard him threaten to turn crooked like I heard him either. From what I've heard, the smiling kid acts differently than most outlaws. Well, he never shot nobody or tortured them or anything like that. Nor he never stole from anybody except them as could spare it. Which makes me more sure in my mind than ever that the smiling kid's Bob. If you're certain of his identity, why don't you go after him? Wouldn't know where to look for one thing. From the letters his parents received they from him. mailed. It's all of somebody just riding through that brings him. And they never seem to know anything about the fellow that sent him. I see. But there's another reason why I don't look him up. Yes? Instead of riding to him, I'm going to sit here and let him come riding to me. What do you mean by that? Well, Matilda's ailing, ain't she? Well, the Sawbone said she was mighty bad off. Uh-huh. And I'm willing to bet anything you want to name that Bob gets word of that same and comes to see her. And when he does, I'll nab him. I see. Well, good day, Sheriff. What did that fella say his handle was, Sheriff? He didn't say. Eh, it's funny. What's funny about it? Ain't no law saying a fella's got to give his name less than he wants to. But he was asking all them questions. Asking questions? <laughs> you old galoot. He'd have to go some to beat you. Asking questions. <laughs> ah, go on. Why, you're just mad because he beat you to them. Sheriff didn't know that the stranger was the lone ranger in disguise. Leaving town, he sent Silver toward the camp he and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, had made in the shaft of an abandoned mine. There he drew the great horse to a stop and... Whoa, whoa, Silver. Oh, boy. Come out here, Tonto. You gone a long time. I learned some interesting things, Kimasabi. Remember the smiling kid? Uh-huh. I've got good reason to believe his real name is Bob Jessup, and that he came from Fairfield. His parents still live in the town. Oh. I got that from the sheriff. I made other inquiries and learned that this very mine here once belonged to Bob's father. Then him make secret tunnel. That tunnel leading from inside the shaft we found hidden by boulders? Not it. It isn't likely. No, I've got an idea that was dug out by some outlaw who used this place for a hideout once. It couldn't have been the smiling kid either, because he didn't work in this district. Oh. Bob Jessup's mother is seriously ill. Bob may return to see her. If he does, the sheriff will pick him up. Sheriff say that? Yes. But I want to see Bob before the sheriff does. There's a slight chance that Bob isn't the smiling kid after all. Oh. But that isn't my main reason. There have been some rather strange stories told about the smiling kid. And if they're true, there are some things to be said in his favor. And what we do? Tonto, you and I are going to get an accurate description of Bob Jessup. Perhaps there's a picture of him somewhere around. His mother might have one of the girl he once kept company with. The school teacher in town. Oh. And then we're going to patrol every trail leading to Fairfield. If Bob returns to the district, we're going to see him first. It was
was three days later, just as dusk was falling, that the masked man sighted Bob Jessup. He sent Tonto galloping swiftly to town while he himself circled and drew Silver to a stop where a woods bordered the trail. There he waited under cover for Bob to ride by. There he is, Silver, old fellow. At least we know it's Bob Jessup. And I think we'll soon know whether it's a smiling kid. Quiet, boy. Come on, boy. All right, Silver. What the smiling kid, huh? Pull up. Whoa, 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 there, whoa. whoa. Silver. Whoa. Mast. How'd you have you? I didn't know. But you just admitted it. Why, Don't you... slap, mother. What do you want with me? There's some things I'm going to ask you, smiling kid, but not here. Into the woods with you. We're getting out of sight. Now wait. I ought to... Reach, and I'll outdraw you. Come with me. You've got nothing to fear. Then why did you... You'll soon see. Follow Silver. Come on, old fellow. Get up. Get up there. This way, Bob. To that clearing. I'm coming. Here. This will do. Go, Silver. Go, go. Go there. Yep. Dismount. Yep. Now, what did you stop me for? Why'd you bring me here? You're the smiling kid. There's no use you're denying it now. I don't see how you guessed it. I know why you turned outlaw. I know that for almost a year you were a hold-up man. But in this last year, nothing's been heard of the smiling kid. Why? Because I went straight. Yes? And where has the money come from that you've been sending to your parents? You didn't steal enough to carry them through these last months. I came by it honest. My pa's a mining man, and he taught me all he knew about it. I located pay dirt up north, and I've been working it. You can believe me or not, but it's so. You made just enough for your parents and yourself? Mm, well, Answer. Well, there was other things. For instance. All right, you might as well know. You know I'm the smiling kid, so there ain't no use hiding what I've done. I stole from the bank and the express company and a dozen others. But I've paid every cent of it back. That's where the rest of the dust from my claim went to. To pay back what I took. You just handed over the money, told them who you were, and explained why you were doing it? Well, of course I didn't. Paying back the cash wouldn't have squared me with the law. I'd done that to get... You know, to get square with myself. I sent the money back secret. I didn't tell anything. I see. And even if you don't believe but me... But I do. Huh? Why... I knew that money had been returned. It was never made public, however. And I knew the money had been sent back without an explanation. The fact that you knew it also proves you're telling the truth. I am... Hey, who's that? I sent Tonto after someone. I think you'll want to see. Someone that. Why, that's... Oh, that's how oh, cool. What? May! Oh, it's you, May. Uh, hello, Bob. Oh, May, honey. Oh, let me look at you. Oh, it's been so long. Well, I, I thought you'd forgotten. You haven't sent any word. Honey, I couldn't. Gosh, it's a long story. There isn't time to explain it all now. We must make some quick decisions. Why was I brought here? Bob was known as the Smiling Kid. An outlaw? You must have suspected that. You know why he did it. But he's repaid every dollar he took. Oh, you see, honey, that don't square me with the law. I've still got to keep on the prod, but... Oh, Ma's sick. I... She... She's dying, Bob. Dying? Oh, no. Then I got to see her. The blaze with the sheriff and going to jail. I'm going to see her no matter what. Of course. It's just possible that you can do it and still not be jailed. Oh, if he could. I have a plan in mind. But afterwards, it would mean that Bob would have to disappear from this district forever. Then I'll go with him. Bob, do you think you could persuade the sheriff not to arrest you openly until you're ready to leave your parents' home? He's always liked you, Bob. Oh, I shouldn't think he'd jail me as long as I was needed by, by Ma. I've talked to him. I think he's a man who will do his duty, but with judgment. In that case, Bob, have him delay the arrest. I will, somehow. I can't tell you more at present because I must make sure of certain facts before we act. I'll get in touch with you in a day or two. Come, Tonto. Oh, you're ready. You're leaving? There's work to do. You and Bob ride on to town, and don't worry. But, but why are you doing all this for me, stranger? Because I want to see justice done. And justice isn't always served by the letter of the law. Let's go, Tonto. Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. After leaving Bob Jessup and May Williams, the Lone Ranger and Tonto returned to the abandoned mine. There they carefully examined the secret tunnel leading from within the mine shaft, after which the masked man sent Tonto to town for certain supplies. At just about the time the faithful Indian was entering Fairfield, Bob was kneeling beside the bed of his mother. Ma, Ma, you've just got to get well. You've got to. It, it don't matter now, son. Oh, Ma. Hey, now, don't you feel bad? I've lived my time, been happy, had my share of the good things. Now that I've seen you once more, I, I've had all a mother could ask for. Oh, don't, Ma, please don't. Don't, don't you listen to your Ma, son. She's going to get well again. You you bet she is. Will you take care of her? And one of these days, she'll be up and around singing and laughing and... <laughs> singing and laughing and... <laughs> you both just a pair of crybabies. <laughs> Why can't it be me instead of you, Ma? Why can't... The door, son. Here. What is it, May? The, the sheriff's here, Bobby. He, he wants to speak to you. The sheriff? Now, what does oh, he want? Oh, can't be nothing for. Most likely he heard I was home and dropped in to say hello. Tell him I'm coming, May. We'll be right there, Sheriff. Oh, I won't be going but a second, Ma. That's all right. Remember, Bob, you can't let him jail you now. Mm-hmm. Evening, Sheriff. Evening, Bob. Gosh, you filled out some. You're a sight heftier than when I seen you last. I reckon that ain't all you come here to tell me, Sheriff. I, I'd rather we stepped outside on the porch. Oh, sure. Uh, you guessed I knew. Mm-hmm. Bob, I want you to know I'm sorry about this. I'm Sheriff, so I gotta do my sworn duty. But it sure ain't what I'd be choosing. Oh, I ain't blaming you, Sheriff. You ain't never hinted about this to the folks, have you? Nary a word. What kind of a polecat do you take me for? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to say that. Sure, of course you didn't. Well, we... Oh, have... wait, Sheriff. Huh? Look, Ma, Ma's about gone. Doc was here when I rode in. He said she couldn't last more than a couple of days at the most. You don't have to arrest me before that, do you? Mm -hmm. Can't you let Ma go happy? Don't you see how terrible it'll be for her to live these last hours knowing her boy's nothing but, but a common crook? Shucks, Bob. I ain't aiming to hurt your mo none. Well, then you won't arrest me? I don't know just what. I'll tell you what. Yeah? I ain't saying I want to go to jail. The well, fact is, I, I'll tell you plain, I'll do the best I can to stay clear of the lockup. Mm. But I'll give you my word of honor. I won't try to get away before... before Ma's gone or, or gets well again, if such is going to be. You'll give me your word? I will. And you can be watching me all the time. Just so you don't let on to the folks about it. It sounds fair enough. Well, of course it is. You ain't likely to break your word, seeing as how if you tried sneaking away, your ma'd learn the truth. That's just it. And if you did try it, you wouldn't get far anyhow. I'll see to that. Then it's agreed? Sure. Doggone, Chef. You're all right. Now, come on in and say a few words to the folks. Don't let on to a thing. <laughs> night of the following day that in answer to a signal from the masked man, Bob left the veranda where he'd been keeping watch and hurried across the yard. The lone ranger, mounted on silver, waited in the deep shadow of a barn. When Bob arrived, he swiftly outlined his plan. You have everything clear now, Bob? You bet I have. And it's the slickest scheme I ever heard of. Be sure you tell May what to do. I will. She's already resigned her position as school teacher, and you can depend on the both of us. Good. And one more thing. Yeah? Your father. You should tell him the truth about these last two years. He'll understand, and he'll forgive you. Well, it won't come easy, but... Oh, I reckon I'll feel a heap better once it's done. Of course you will. You needn't mention our plan. You can, however, tell him how to join you and May when this is over. Once you've left, you won't dare get in touch with him. Gosh, I never thought of that. Uh-huh. That's just what I'll do. I'll fix on a place, and he can meet us when the time's right for it. Then I'll be getting back to camp. And, friend, I'll be seeing you when it's time for us to do like you said. Adios. Come on, Silver. seemed to those watching beside the sick bed of Mrs. Jessup that she tried very hard to retain her weakening hold on life. The return of her son had made her happy. 
She seemed content to go, and the end came when Bob had been home for a little more than a week. Bob spoke to his father the following morning. Everything settled in, Pa? You'll know how to reach me and May when it's safe for you to leave town without the law suspicion and anything? Well, don't you fear, son. I'll get to you. There's the sheriff. Uh, yeah. He don't look real happy about what he figures he's got to do. Oh, the sheriff's a darn good fella. Come on in, Sheriff. Morning, Martin. Morning, Bob. Morning, Sheriff. I reckon you folks savvy how bad I feel about Matilda back home. She was a fine woman. Thank you, Sheriff. Bob, I... Uh... Oh, that's all right, Sheriff. I told Pa about being a smiling kid. I figured he ought to know. He's Just... told me the whole thing, Sheriff. Gosh, I'm free to say I'm glad to hear it. It was going to be a chore having to break the news to you, Martin. Well, Sheriff, it, it weren't what you'd call good news. But the boy figured he had his reasons, I guess. And I kept my promise to you, Sheriff. You sure did, Bob. Well, you ready to get down to the jailhouse now? Ain't much use putting off what has to be done. Sure, I'll go with you. There's Bart. He's calling you, Sheriff. Seems excited about something. Most likely nothing. The old boots always get fussed about nothing at all. Likely somebody stole one of his doggone chickens. What's the racket for? Martin's old mine. There's been a cave-in. Cave-in? Hey, me, there. The school mark. Pin beneath the timber. May. Leaping catfish. You sure? Uh, I seen her. I heard her yelling, rode by, and looked inside. We got to get back there right away before the rest of that shaft bust down. Oh, if it does, she'll be killed. Ma, I'll get witnesses. And make it pronto. Get her out of home. If I could, I would have. Hurry up, son. What could May have been doing there? Don't ask me. Get going, Pa. Come on. Dig into your spurs. Get up. Get up. Get up. There they go, Tonto. Headed for the mine. Uh, now to circle, get there before them, and go around the hill to the secret tunnel. Come on, get Silver Scout. Bob and his three companions drove their mounts to their greatest speed, racing for the entrance to the abandoned mine. They did not see the powerful horses of the Lone Ranger and Tonto following a parallel arroyo, flash ahead and take the lead. At the mine, the masked man sent Silver up the hill into which the mine had been built and beyond to a narrow tunnel screened by rocks and brush. Bob and his party arrived several minutes later. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come on, it's her all right. Watch your head there. Don't bump them timbers and start any more rocks rolling. Are you all right, honey? Are you all right? Look at that timber laying across the chest. Gosh, I don't see how she missed being killed outright. Oh, there now, honey. We'll have you loose in the jiffy. Just as soon as we find out the best way to go about it. Oh, hurry. We'll get at each end of this timber and lift it right off her. Get a hold now, fellas. Ready? Come on. Come on. Hold on. Let go of that timber. Yeah, but... You see what you're doing? Take it away and the whole thing will cave in on top of us all. Then what'll we do? Yeah. Can't you get me off? Well, don't you worry, honey. I don't see no other way to take the timber off. You can lift it an inch or so. Enough so matter can crawl out from under. But then it's got to be braced there. All right, we'll brace it with rocks. They ain't none the right size. A pile of these small ones that just slip right away. My right, golly, that's right. Wait, I got it. Oh, please, please, hurry, Bob. Honey, you're going to be safe out of there in just five seconds. Fella, while Mayor's crawling from under, I'll get there where she was. Then the timber can rest on me. Ain't that mighty risky? I'd rather be there under there instead of May. Oh, no, Bob. No. Don't anybody argue with me. But then how will we get you out? You can make tracks for town and bring back every fellow you can find. Bring him back, Prano. Then with help, you can dig out around me or put some timber to brace the sides and roof for anything you want to do. All right, get on the ends of that timber again. I'm ready. Right. Crawl as fast as you can, May. I will. Now then, easy now. Easy. Hold it. Just like it is. Making it, May. Yeah. I'll be all right. Under with you, Bob. Just a little more. More. Yeah, that's it. Hey, you fellas get on your horses and do like Bob says. I'll wait here. No, all of you go. But then I... I'll go on, Chef. You're being here. Can't help me. It'll mean we both get caught and the roof slides down. And the more of you to get fellas to come here, the more hands we'll have to do what's needed. That's sense. Well, I... Go on, go on. Come on, then, fellas. Hurry. Hurry. Your I'll get the fellas from the cafe, Sheriff. I'll get my deputies. I'll write for the fellas that are always hanging around the store. Steady there, boys. Steady. Get going. Come on, come on. Stop. 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 The inside of the mine where Bob had been held beneath the fallen timber was filled with ton upon ton of earth and stones from overhead. And yet, while the sheriff was convinced that the smiling kid must have been crushed to death, Bob was one of the three dusty figures crawling on hands and knees through a tunnel only large enough to admit their passage. How much further we, 
We have to go. Not far, Bob. See? There's light ahead in the mouth of the tunnel. Get out on the far side of the hill. And we get there quick. Well, then let's go. Making it? Go on. I'll get there. Let me give you a hand. Oh, thanks. And just... Here we are. <laughs> Quiet, old fellow. We're all right. Oh, gosh. It's good to be back in the open. There's me. Oh, oh there, Bo. Oh, Bob, you're safe at work. Oh, honey, you bet it worked. You had no trouble. It went all right. It wasn't difficult. The other end of the secret tunnel was concealed just where Bob lay under the timber. Tonto and I waited for the others to leave, climbed through and lifted the timber while Bob got inside the tunnel. <laughs> and Maggie should have seen me hustle. But Tonto and, and the masked man. There was no real danger. As soon as we dropped the timber and let the support go, we jumped inside the tunnel, too. With just about an inch to spare. Bob, now you're free. Well, your father acted his part just fine, and, and the sheriff thinks you're dead. The hunt will be off. Yeah, thanks to the masked man. You'd better be on your way before anyone comes along. Oh, there's no chance. The other's headed for town. I, I slipped away without their noticing. Good. You can ride double? Oh, sure. Well, you ready, honey? Let's hurry. Oh, hold still there, boy. <coughs> Masked man, I, I don't know how to thank you. Don't. You've got a new life ahead of you, Bob. And I never want to hear that the smiling kid is riding the out trails again. Friend, he won't be. Get up. Get up there. Them, them plenty happy. They are, Kimo Savi. <laughs> City boy. Yep. <coughs> and Tonto, uh, even though this time we kept the law from getting its man, I don't feel guilty. I'll Get him up. Go away. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>